Yellowstone's giant geyser erupts violently, widespread damage in Biscuit Basin, and Mount St. Helens, the story of the most destructive eruption in U.S. history, and Mount Stromboli erupts with high intensity, alert status raised. Yellowstone's giant geyser erupts violently, widespread damage in Biscuit Basin. A deafening roar shattered the calm of Yellowstone National Park as the giant geyser erupted with unprecedented force, sending a massive column of scalding water and steam nearly 300 feet, 90 meters, into the air. The eruption, which lasted for nearly an hour, transformed the peaceful Biscuit Basin into a boiling cauldron of chaos. Witnesses described the ground trembling moments before the geyser exploded. Tourists were rushed to safety as emergency sirens echoed through the park. The eruption's sheer pressure caused visible fractures across the Cilicia Sinter crust, and plumes of steam rolled across the basin like storm clouds. Scientists from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, were quick to respond. We've recorded a significant increase in hydrothermal pressure beneath the basin, explained Dr. Amelia Rhodes, a geophysicist stationed near the upper geyser basin. This kind of eruption suggests a sudden release of built-up heat and gas within the subterranean chambers. It's one of the most intense geyser events we've seen in decades. Satellite thermal imaging confirmed a sudden spike in ground temperature by nearly 15 degrees, accompanied by a sequence of micro-seismic tremors, the telltale signs of hydrothermal instability. These tremors radiated outward for several kilometers, activating smaller geysers like Spasmodic and Bijou, which erupted in sympathetic bursts. The aftermath was dramatic. Boardwalks were torn apart by surging water, mineral deposits were scattered across the basin, and nearby vegetation was scorched by superheated steam. Despite the destruction, researchers noted that such an event offers rare insight into the dynamic plumbing system beneath Yellowstone. Each eruption is a message from below, said Rhodes. It reminds us that Yellowstone's hydrothermal system is alive, restless, and interconnected with deeper magmatic processes. Even though this wasn't a volcanic eruption, it's a reminder that this region remains one of the most active geothermal zones on Earth. Park authorities have since cordoned off parts of Biscuit Basin while seismic monitoring continues at increased sensitivity, though there is no immediate volcanic threat, experts remain cautious, aware that even a slight change in underground pressure could shift the balance between water, heat, and magma. Mount St. Helens, the story of the most destructive eruption in U.S. history. The morning of May 18, 1980, dawned clear and calm, but within minutes, the tranquility of Washington State was obliterated. At 8.32 a.m., Mount St. Helens unleashed one of the most devastating volcanic eruptions in recorded U.S. history. The eruption began with a massive landslide, the largest in human history, that removed the volcano's northern flank, instantly depressurizing the magma chamber beneath. What followed was pure geological fury, a lateral blast of superheated gas, rock and ash racing across the landscape at more than 600 kilometers per hour, flattening everything in its path across 230 square miles. 
600 square kilometers. Forests were leveled, rivers were choked with debris, and the once majestic summit was reduced by 1,300 feet, 400 meters. In just a few hours, 540 million tons of ash were ejected into the atmosphere, spreading across 11 US states and even reaching parts of Canada. Air travel was halted, skies turned dark as night, and the region's ecology was rewritten in fire and ash. Survivors told stories of pitch black skies, of air so thick with volcanic dust that headlights couldn't pierce it. The eruption killed 57 people, most of them caught in the unexpected lateral explosion. But out of the destruction came rebirth. In the years since, scientists have turned Mount St. Helens into a vast open air laboratory, studying how life reclaims devastation. Today, hardy plants and animals thrive in the volcanic soil and new lava domes slowly rebuild the crater from within. Dr. Samuel Pritchard, a volcanologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, reflected on the mountain's enduring legacy. Mount St. Helens changed the way we understand volcanoes. It taught us that eruption patterns can shift rapidly and that the warning signs we once thought were obvious can hide in plain sight. More than 40 years later, the mountain continues to rumble. Minor eruptions and dome building events remind researchers that Mount St. Helens is far from dormant. It's merely resting, waiting for the next chapter in its volatile history to unfold. Mount Stromboli erupts with high intensity, alert status raised. Across the Atlantic, the island of Stromboli off the coast of Sicily trembled as one of the world's most active volcanoes entered a phase of intense high energy eruption. The night sky lit up in crimson and gold as lava fountains burst hundreds of meters above the summit, cascading down the volcano's steep slopes and flowing toward the sea. Known as the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean, Stromboli has been erupting almost continuously for thousands of years. Yet this eruption, scientists say, ranks among the strongest in recent decades. The Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, quickly raised the alert level to orange, signaling a heightened risk of explosive events and rockfalls. 